Hello everybody and welcome to today's lesson on graphing tangent and cotangent functions. Today our objectives are we will graph tangent and cotangent functions and we will state the domain and the range of those tangent and cotangent functions. If we want to graph a tangent function, we are going to start with the same approach that we did for sine and cosine. We're going to look for our five key values and take it from there. Let's go back to our unit circle and put all our measurements in, all in radians, starting with 0 pi. Then we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and back to the beginning, which is 2 pi. And the coordinates of these points, as we know, are 1 and 0 here, 0 and 1, negative 1 and 0, and 0 and negative 1. Then let's create our table of values, x and tangent of x. And let's remember that the tangent is really the ratio of the sine over the cosine. And with respect to the coordinates of our unit circle, you could also say it is the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. All right then, we're ready to put our values in, starting with our first value, x is 0, and the tangent of 0, we got 0 over 1, that's also 0. And here's our first y-coordinate. Next we're going to go to pi over 2. I'm going to leave some room, you should too, and you will find out soon why. At pi over 2 we have 1 divided by 0, and that is undefined. Move on to pi. We got 0 over negative 1, that is 0 again. Going to 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, negative 1 divided by 0 is undefined again. And the back to the start at 2 pi, we got 0 over 1, and that is 0. Now looking at this table of values, we see that it's not really all that helpful, so we need to find some additional values. And the ones we're going to use are the ones that are right in the middle between the ones we already have taken. So pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And do you remember the coordinates on the unit circle? We got square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. We got negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, lots of square roots of 2. We got negative square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. And last but not least, we got square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. And that lets us calculate the ratios now. So at pi over 4, we have square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over the 2. Anything divided by itself is 1, so that makes it easy. Move on to 3 pi over 4. We got the negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. That will give us a negative 1. Moving on to 5 pi over 4, where both values are negative, which gives us a positive ratio of 1. and at 7 pi over 4, we get another negative 1. And now we do have some values that help us start graphing our tangent function. But first we have to set up our coordinate plane with our x-axis and our y-axis. And we're going to mark these two axes exactly the same way as we did for the sine and cosine functions. After four boxes we got pi, then 4 more is 2 pi, 4 more is 3 pi, up 2 is a 1, and up 2 more is a 2, and down we got negative 1 and negative 2. 
And now we can mark our points on the table. At 0 we got 0. At 1 fourth pi we got 1. At pi over 2 we have undefined. And remember undefined is really an asymptote and we are going to mark it as an asymptote. Moving on to 3 pi over 4 we got negative 1. Pi we got 0. 5 pi over 4 we got 1. And then we got another asymptote at 3 pi over 2. At 7 pi over 4 we got negative 1, 2 pi we got 0, and if we kept going we would have another one at 9 pi over 4, and at 5 pi over 2 we got another asymptote. Remember from our rational functions unit that in the vicinity of an asymptote the graph gets closer and closer to it, and that is how we're going to graph it here. and mark our asymptote here and the other graphs are going to look like that as well and here is our graph for the tangent function please note that the pattern repeats after pi each time so we have an asymptote after each distance of pi and that means that the period for tangent functions is not 2 pi as in sine and cosine functions, it's just pi. And also domain and range are going to be different. We don't have all real numbers for the domain because we have our asymptotes and those asymptotes come back in regular intervals. So the domain is x such that x cannot be... So what numbers can x not be? x cannot be pi over 2 and then after pi over 2, which is our first asymptote, we have another asymptote each time we complete a full cycle of pi plus pi. But that's going to be happening over and over again. So we multiply pi by a number k, and this number k has to be an integer. So it can be positive whole numbers or negative ones and we add that many pi's to pi over 2 each time to find another asymptote. On the other hand, the range is not limited by an amplitude. The range this time is going to be all real numbers. Then let's move on to the graph of the cotangent function and we're going to set up a table of values yet again. Now remember that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent and that also means it is the cosine over the sine so it's the reciprocal of that fraction and then it's also the x-coordinate over the y-coordinate. So going back to our unit circle we're going to now use the x-coordinate and divided by the y-coordinate. So that means that at 0 we get a value that is undefined. Pi over 4 is good and gives us a 1. Pi over 2 gives us 0. 3 pi over 4 negative 1. Pi undefined. 5 pi over 4 is 1, 3 pi over 2, which is like saying 6 pi over 4, is 0, 7 pi over 4 is negative 1, and 2 pi is undefined yet again. Let's set up our coordinate plane. So, now let's see what we got for points at 0 cotangent value is undefined, that means we have our first asymptote going right along the y-axis, then at pi over 4 we got positive 1, pi over 2 is 0, 3 pi over 4 is negative 1, and we got our next asymptote 
at pi. And then at 5 pi over 4, we have positive 1, 3 pi over 2, 0, 7 pi over 4, negative 1. At 2 pi, we have another asymptote. And now we can graph our cotangent function, which is again going to get closer and closer to the asymptote, never reaching it. And that pattern repeats itself indefinitely. And how far apart are these asymptotes from each other? Just like in the tangent, as you can see, you go from 0 to pi and to 2 pi. The period is pi again. And what about domain and range? The domain has restrictions again, as we have seen, because of our asymptotes. x cannot be equal to 0. And then the next one is at pi and at 2 pi and it would continue 3 pi and so on. So we don't have to put 0, we just say pi times k. Remember k can be an integer and that integer can also be 0 and that includes our first asymptote which is on the y-axis and our range is all real numbers. So in order to graph our tangent and cotangent functions, we are better off if we know where the asymptotes are. Those give our graph structure. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the equations of the asymptotes. Here we see our tangent and our cotangent functions in standard form and the expression inside the parentheses give us those asymptotes. For our tangent function, the first two asymptotes that we find both to the right and to the left of the origin are bx minus c is equal to pi over 2 and bx minus c is equal to negative pi over 2. For the cotangent, this expression gives us the first two asymptotes being bx minus c is equal to 0. The first asymptote went along the y-axis and the next one to the right was at pi. What else do we need to find for our tangent and cotangent functions to be able to graph them? We need a, this as in all other functions gives us the dilation, how much the function gets stretched or shrunk. But other than in the case of the sine and cosine functions, it doesn't give us an amplitude. There is no maximum or minimum y value. The range is all real numbers. So there is no amplitude for tangent and cotangent functions. The period gets calculated by pi over b. And the other important transformations, the vertical shift is equivalent to the d value of the function and the horizontal shift is c over b, but we take care of that when we set our asymptotes. All right, that's it for the first part of this tutorial. Now go ahead and watch the second part where we'll go through some practice examples.